Let's now talk about form actions. Form actions are actions that happen when you first load or when you click on the submit button on a form. You will be able to see them in your workflow here. You can see on add, on load, you can do certain things. You've also got on edit, on load, and you've got on success. So on add, on load, that happens when the user is creating a new record for the first time, as in they're adding a new record, whereas on edit, on load, that is called when the form is subsequently edited when the form loads after the user clicks on edit, this particular hook will get called. And then you've got on delete and there's obviously no on load for on delete because as soon as the user clicks the delete button, it goes straight to validate to make sure that they are actually allowed to delete that record. You can achieve a lot of things with the on load hooks. Often I use them to hide certain fields. If I have a bunch of fields, as I do in this particular form, that are only for calculation purposes, you'll see that I have some that are fields like, have they been reminded of appointment time? In that case, that is only relevant after they have edited the record because the data is naturally ready for that step. I've also got these kind of fields here, cancellation reason change. That's purely a way of storing a value short term so that I can then do something differently on the on success. Because there's no way it, there's no way of storing a variable within deluge. You need to actually put it into the form temporarily. So to do that, I have these fields that are not meant to be shown in the UI only meant for temporarily storing data. And then in the on success hook, there's a check for things like if the rep changed, then we have some data that we're logging to the notes to the notes subform for this record. So we want to keep an audit trail. So in that situation, these fields here are being used for temporary data storage. We've talked about on load there's also validate. Validate is called when the user clicks on the submit button. You're able to cancel submit. You can see here that we've got some commented out code. We used to have a hard requirement that the salespeople filled out a checklist before they were able to save. But that turned out to be a bit too onerous, so we didn't end up going through with that. You can see it's possible to do cancel submit if you want to block someone from submitting the form if they haven't put in the correct kind of data. Finally, you have on success. This allows you to perform actions on success. For example, here we want to add notes into the audit trail that put in the customer's prior experience with Solar. There are many other things you might want to do. You can do open URL if you want the user to be redirected to another page. That can be quite handy if you want to, for example, show a thank you message after someone submits a form. You can use open URL for that. There are some things that you can't do depending on the page. You can't do an alert on the on success script because by that point the user has already left the form. There, you'll generally find it out because it won't let you save the script if you try and add in an unsupported method. It's generally things like not being able to do alerts and there may also be other, depending on what kind of hook it is, there will be other things that you're not allowed to do. Hopefully that gives you an overview of what the different lifestyle hooks there are. There's the onload, on add, validate, on success, same thing with edit, and then the on delete hooks as well.